right now we get to the fun part and oh, then we'll good. wrap it up this is rapid fire so we'll go every other this okay. is where you get exposed where All the right. audience will really be able to sing you on linkedin and make sing fun us. of you i'm oh, starting with you brian yes sir what is something you are great at cooking? Yeah, so I love um, breakfast uh, as a dad to do that for my kids. And so I'll do elbow skewers. I'll do uh, breakfast burritos, all kinds of easy stuff like that. He's giving out stuff. his address and, and Twitter yeah. account because everyone's <laughs> going to show up at his house on Sunday morning yeah, come now. Come on. Yeah, I'm not afraid. Patrick, what's the best advice you've ever been given? This too shall pass. So if we're having a bad, if I'm having a bad Ooh. day, I'm like, you know what? I got to steer clear and just... Go with the flow. If things are great, it's I love for things to stay great all the time, but I get it. It's not always going to happen, but this too shall pass. I think it's on my original Facebook account too for life quotes. So. If you could eliminate one thing from your daily routine, what would it be and why? Well, obviously working out because whenever <laughs> you do, you get hurt. Uh, this is his journey oh, to bodybuilding, yes, by the way. Yes, no. <laughs> I see the tag like workout and coffee. Back to you, Patrick. What would you like to do when you retire? Um, you know, honest to gosh, I've thought about this. I don't think I, as crazy as it sounds, I don't think I ever want to retire. I, I get up every morning. I get super excited. This poor guy has to put up with my uh, cheerleading all the day. But it's just, I, I've i wor been working straight through since 16. I worked three jobs in college. So I'm. Any of you coffee people out there need an endorsement? <laughs> Here is your ambassador. Uh, of Quan, so maybe you can strike a, a IGA with the gov right. with, yeah. with the AJ to have a cold coffee endorsement. <laughs> well, until my doctor's like cut yeah. the coffee out. But, no, no, no. Um, your 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 you energy's know, infectious. I, I, honestly, I, it, well, so the okay. pure answer. I think I finally got my passport last year. That was a miraculous thing because I've never I've never traveled outside the country. But I do see wanting to be a world traveler later, world traveler late, later in life. All right. What skill do you think everyone should have? Listening. Huh? Listening. <laughs> <laughs> say something? Best comeback yeah, ever. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, we'll leave it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? This one's for both of you. What are you reading or listening to right now? Your podcast. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Don't um, be patronizing. I, I, Come I, on. Um, <laughs> The last, so I, 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 my last position, it was an hour drive, so I did a lot of Audible. Um, one of the last books I had was Dr. Steve Covey's um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, yeah. What a life transition book. I then learned he uh, passed away in 2013. Like, oh, I had so many burning questions, but I'm sure his sons and, and his kids would happily answer if I ever got the opportunity. Very but, popular. I think, I've, I think I've read and listened to that up to four times now. So I will tell you, you will, when you mature and get old like me, you'll read it again and again. How about you, so Brian? I'm going to get serious now, and you're going to think I'm not. But really, right now, it popped up on our way over here because of the Bluetooth, right? I'm listening to a podcast on healthy eating. <laughs> and not no, really, good, yeah, so trying to do better, you know, that way. And just um, the day-to-day -day grind can get, get to us, and, and uh, that's, my, that's my listen right now. Go to. What movie could you watch over and over again? Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, come on. Oh. That was so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give, I give you right. Right. So, so my favorite is Gladiator. Like I can, oh. anytime I see that one on, I just I'll stop and it's it's a it's good. Yeah, that is a good one. I yeah. like that one. Yeah, I think that was actually one of Russell Crowe's better ones. Yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm one of those folks who loves to see a movie once because I get it and I got it and I'll refer to it, but. Um, I've seen, as so shocking as it sounds, Inception a couple times because I was wanted to see maybe that thimble the, at the very end. Maybe it did tip down. Maybe it did stay up. But it was a very mind-boggling, multidimensional thing, and I love like when my brain is challenged. So I'd say Inception. A couple more. Both of you again. What would you like to be remembered for? I, I think that, you know, my legacy, if, if, if my grandkids or great-grandkids can look back and say, look, he made a difference by um, participating in the public process, the civics, we're in a really unique time at City Hall where, folks, we want to fight. And so my, my, my thing is, like, let's just calm the drama down. Let's just walk through things. So if someone would look back and say, that guy, he just kind of was like, I don't want to say boring, but just steady. Steady Eddie. You know, steady Eddie. Yeah, that would be okay. Stay you know? Bryant. Yeah, that's okay by me. That's cool. Patrick? Um, as cliche as it sounds, I always have a lot of internal passion, passion for helping people, passion for getting businesses off the ground. I mean, one of my favorite projects was a couple towns ago, we're seeing, uh, talking about a $75 million development, and I, and I handled the purchase and sale agreement, the parking license agreement, the entitlement, seeing it through permitting, and it was just, and, and it's up and uh, running now. It's a 212-unit mm. building. I advocated, and I stuck with it like a stubborn person that I am sometimes to, to get the ground floor retail going, and now there may be a restaurant going in that space. So it's just, I had this inherent passion because I know what that end vision can look like, and I know 
know how to get there. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I hopefully it doesn't you know become overbearing, but I, my passion to help people and passion to get things done is definitely probably a legacy lever. What news sources or, or bits of information do you use to stay in touch with your um, involvement in kind of everything that we're talking about in, in the Mac and Blue, in other words, building Arizona? And we like to do this so that other people know how to get either connections on network, information, um, like a popular one is Phoenix Business Journal, but mm -hmm. I use that as kind of just a – so with that as a catalyst, can either one of you speak to that? Do you want to start? I, yeah, sure. Um, honestly, gosh, I think LinkedIn is great. We're, we're, we're great partners with the Phoenix East Valley Partnership, the, which is seven communities that join together to, to advance the East Valley of Phoenix. Uh, we're part of GPEC, so we, we follow their leads um, – you know, we've got a lot of great uh, community ones too. The uh, we have a brand new e uh, newsletter that uh, hopefully I'm not taking your thunder okay, on no. that one. Uh, we've got the chamber newsletter that we're very ha actively involved in. But uh, the things that I follow are, like you just said, the Phoenix Business uh, Phoenix Business Journal, um, France Media's. Uh, we've got um, a lot of the France Media stuff, but I I know that's just the developer economic development site. But I know there's more. Yeah. So for me, I, it's Capital Times. Um, I, I did think of Fe uh, Phoenix Business Journal. It's but just that's an easy a kind one of because most us, of the people yeah. in our industry are, have some connection to affiliation to that. Um, I I just we, yeah, we, the reason one. we asked this is yeah. naturally the audience always wants to know like how do all of us interact and yeah. every time we can offer up one more avenue it could be digital print I mean well let's be honest print's gone but uh, uh, you know the digital version of print or the, those organizations the groups um, all there's so much networking yeah. in this valley. But go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I was just going to think about the um, – it's so beneficial. I went to the uh, ULI conference. I can't remember the exact one. I oh, went. Trends Day. Trends Day. It was Where was that at? It was at um, Desert – up at uh, uh, the Marriott on the north side of town. Oh. Desert Ridge? Uh, Desert, Desert Ridge. Ridge. Yep, yep. Is that yeah. annual then? Because you're a ULI guy, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I attended a lot of ULI in Chicago. I'm not a member. Um, okay. And I was told – I should go to this one, and I unfortunately I was supposed to be out of town. That I wasn't out of town, but I, yeah. I'm glad you went. But it's a annual event. Uh, there's like 1,100 people in a room talking about Arizona, the trends, the construction yeah. prices, and it's a great, like you said, networking opportunity. He gave me a bunch of uh, things from that thing that uh, I'm yeah. still following up on. And yeah, I, I don't want. I haven't been to that one in a few years, but I do remember it being very impactful, very, very innovative. You know, progress. You know, kind of thinking out where where we're going to be heading. Uh, and then we have to work within our structures like MAG, Maricopa Association of Governments, thinking about air quality, thinking about the environment, thinking about transit, and those organizations that have actual authority um, to work with ADOT to to do it. So it's kind of this combination of ideas, ULI, and at the same time bringing in that uh, system of, of, of taxes and the investment of those uh, through MAG or through ADOT. You know. Can I tag on real quick? No, you're and done. I, as a matter of fact, <laughs> my, my, my apologies to Pinnell Partnership. Pinnell Partnership's another one, great one. And then that is in person. They have a yeah. lot of breakfasts throughout Pinnell County. The Phoenix East Valley Partnership has a lot of great in-person events. Can you, just because there's a lot more, you know, a lot of what's on Mac and Blue is has migrated more towards Pinnell is that something that goes like between AJ, Florence, Coolidge? Like, is it rotational sure it or how does that work? Yeah, they, they travel. And I mean, it's just amazing to think our county, Pinal County, is the size of uh, Connecticut, not California, Connecticut in terms of land area. And the majority of it is state-owned land and uh, and some agricultural land that, that may transcend into uh, in, in, uh, industrial, industrial and development. So they do travel throughout. I think we had a Pinal partnership meeting in, in AJ in February. I think the next one's going to be in Casa Grande. So they do rotate. Okay, yeah. And uh, there was a great growth summit that was hosted by Phoenix um, uh, Business Journal in Casa Grande last week. So Yeah, I do remember that post. Mm -hmm. uh, one last one, and then we'll get you guys back to your – your job or the golf course or wherever you <laughs> want to go or the gym. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> Instead of truth or dare, I'm picking truth. So you have to th think a little bit beyond this. So what's your biggest fantasy? Like being a man on the moon this or something crazy? Sounds like super nerdy. But when I was in my hometown and there was like a $300 million lottery jackpot, I sat right next to our engineer who was our engineer for 20 years. And I said, if I won the lottery, you have my word, I will give you a million dollars to help rebuild the roads because it was an unincorporated area. They did a televised thing and the, the sewers were all bad. And again, this is Midwestern <laughs> rustic city. And, and I, this is my hometown. I, I love where the potholes are called lakes. Sure. Yeah. But, and, and uh, kudos to, to uh, uh, Dave Talbot. He, 
he retired, but I, I still thought to this day, I'm like, if I win the lottery, over 100 million bucks, I'm still giving a million dollars to that town because you know what? They they did so much for me. All the indus- industrial pay for my education. Uh, their tax system is a little bit different, their property tax system. And I kind of always thought as a fantasy to pay forward. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without the Sloan Valves of the world because they're headquartered yeah. out of uh, Franklin Park or the Warner Landers when they were there in Franklin Park, they, they moved out of state. But I just thought, kind of like what you said, that legacy, paying, paying it forward, as dorky as that sounds, because I, I lived in that town, I worked in those, and I saw the televised, like, there's no sewers left. What are you going to do? And he's like, find money. <laughs> and that, that, that was the fantasy I still remember from 11 years ago. How about you, Brian? So, so if, if ever, so fantasy would be a, a, just a dream to, to get to meet like a celebrity like a Charles Barkley and play golf with him and let him know of the systems that are in place. So our budget is is really small. You know, it's really not a huge thing, but to get some kind of interest and in industry of of celebrities to come out and be interested would be a dream of our community and and to and to, to talk to, to Sir Charles or somebody that's so passionate I about love it. Yeah, it would be a dream because it, it, it's just he's about ten years older than me and watched. Him growing up and and uh, seems to be a person that really appreciates um, where people come from and how they can grow over time.